Hello, everyone. Thank you all for coming. I'm delighted to be here today. Unfortunately, the second speaker, Shambara Nat, uh, didn't manage to join me today, but he passes his excuses and uh, say <laughs> and wished me good luck. <laughs> uh, today, I'm presenting uh, smart baggage tracking. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll start with short introduction. My name is Elena Travkina. I lead IoT practice uh, at Alteros. Alteros is a professional services company that provides services around Cloud Foundry, uh, starting from uh, deployment Cloud Foundry and ending building applications on top of Cloud Foundry. Uh, Alteros IoT practice is focused on cloud-based industrial internet solutions. Uh, in the last year, we implemented uh, the number of prototypes, proof of concepts for industrial internet. And today I'll tell about one of it, smart baggage tracking. But first of all, why baggage tracking? What are the particular reasons for choosing this area, especially for our company, for professional services company? Today, Digital disruption is the talk of the town. Go digital, digitalize your business. We hear it so often, so digitalization become a, a buzzword. The same with platform as a service, cloud computing, cloud native development. But what the examples, how Cloud Foundry can help businesses? Six months ago, Alteros decided to exemplify how the aviation industry uh, can benefit from employing Cloud Foundry. With uh, GE Digital uh, Mentoring, we decided to build baggage checking solution, sensor-based, end-to-end for airlines. Where did we start? We started with getting a clear understanding of the problem, and we started with learning the industry standards. A lot of documents, resolutions, reports. I don't want to tire you with all this stuff. So I'll tell a story. A story about Jessica and Mike. Meet Jessica and Mike. There are uh, Cloud Foundry engineers and they are going to Frankfurt to the Cloud Foundry Summit. Jessica and Mike are flying from San Francisco to uh, Frankfurt through Chicago. And both of them have checked baggage. Jessica and Mike are thinking about the summit, but they don't know these sad statistics. According to CETA report, more than 23 million bags were mishandled in 2015. Most bags were delayed. In view of the reasons for mishandling, uh, the biggest point is flight connections. Uh, but also a considerable number of mishandled bags uh, related to the failures during baggage loading and unloading. But let's get back to Jessica and Mike. Uh, Jessica and Mike arrived in Frankfurt. Was a trip convenient? Not exactly. The story started in San Francisco with long line to check in, but it was okay. They expected the long line, uh, long lines. They were in, at the uh, San Francisco airport on time, and everything looks good till they landed in Chicago airport. There weren't, wasn't much time between flights, around an hour. And uh, Jessica and Mike ran to the gate. Uh, as soon as they reached it, they realized that the gate had been changed. Fortunately, they reached correct gate in 15 minutes, uh, but Mike didn't manage to buy the candies for his German friends. Unpleasant, but it's still okay. They arrived in Frankfurt on schedule. Mike's bag has been delivered. But where is my bag? asks Jessica. Half an hour later, the bag still isn't there. 
and Jessica goes to lost in, to the baggage service office to file a claim. Meet Ronald. Ronald works at the baggage service office, and Ron can tell a lot of sad stories. Ron says uh, the normal cost of handling a bag is ten dollars. The cost of delayed bag is one hundred dollars, and the cost of lost bag could be three thousand three hundred dollars. Moreover, mishandling bags make ne negative impact on customer satisfaction and can lead to additional losses. Jessica is, is filing a lost baggage claim. Ron is assuring that the bag will be found really soon, even though he isn't believing it. And Mike is dreaming about the airport of the future. How do we make travel more convenient? How do we build the airport of the future? First of all, we, we should think about uh, the essential improvements, such as baggage tracking, such as guided navigation, informational services, and then we should consider optional improvements that can make uh, a unique passenger experience, like transfer services, home delivery, and all these services should be in one application, not in 10 of them. International Air Transport Association is also thinking about improving the baggage handling. And as a part of the in-bag program, they launch, launched resolution 753 that obliges airlines to have end-to-end -end baggage custody information by June 2018. What does it mean? Uh, the main goal of uh, Resolution 753 uh, is provide to absolutely transparent um, vision of baggage handling for the all stakeholders, airlines, ground services, passengers. As Andrew Price says, this need comes from the industry members. So airlines uh, want to know the weakest points in baggage handling chain and want to improve passenger experience. Let's look uh, how airlines and airports improve passenger experience and implement resolution 753. Delta Airlines uh, invested $50 million in RFID implementation. The test installation showed that the bags are, are um, uh, that the bags are tracked at a 99 success rate. Uh, Alaska Airlines doing a pilot project with their loyalty members. They distributed 500 uh, electronic bag tags to their frequent flyers. And Las Vegas, Helsinki, Hong Kong, Milan, Amsterdam airports has all the essential infrastructure to work with RFIDs. Alteros uh, has been involved in several initiatives with airlines and picked up a lot of knowledge about improving passenger satisfaction. So we decided to build this solution on top of GE Predix as a suite of microservices and REST APIs. Let's look at the main features that were implemented. Our application works in two operation modes. Normal operation mode, when back uh, tracks from check-in point to the claim belt, and this operation mode supposes that the baggage will be uh, delivered on the proper claim belt on time without any issues. So the passenger uh, finds his bag on the claim belt on time. The second operation mode uh, handles exceptional cases like uh, uh, delayed bag, like lost bags. Also, we implemented the RESTful API for the airlines to comply with resolution 753. Uh, that allows airlines ground services to get all necessary information about the bag status. And all 
participants in this process get information in real-time mode. And all of them can get push notifications. Let's look about the push notifications and their role in the system. Push notifications from passenger's perspective uh, guide passenger from the start of their journey to the end of it. They show uh, the back status. They um, uh, warn about changing the gates. They warn about changing in board and closure time. And optional push notification can uh, contain information about the shop offers. At the start of the project, we faced a number of challenges. How do we build our application secure? How do we manage the huge amount of data from the sensors? Which sensors do we choose to comply with industry standards? How do we reach high availability and scalability? And finally, how do we build our application quickly? At the start of the project, we made three important decisions. We uh, decided to use intelligent IoT platform. We chose RFID tags as a sensors. And uh, we decided to use microservice architecture approach. Let's talk about each of them in detail. As intelligent IoT platform, we chose a G Predix. What is a G Predix? Predix is a general electric cloud foundry distribution optimized for industrial internet needs. Why Predix? First of all, because it's cloud foundry and it ensures fast development and fast deployment. But what does, uh, which benefits uh, does Predix offer in our case? First of all, Predix is built to promote and support microservice architecture approach that uh, we've chosen. Secondly, Predix provides uh, a unique uh, ecosystem around industrial Internet of Things. They provided a rich catalog, G Digital, together with their partners, built a unique catalog that contains services and solutions uh, around industrial Internet of Things. There are security services, so you can use security from the box, from the edge devices to the mobile application. There are data, data management services, advanced analytics services that you can use in your application and build it really quickly. And the most amazing thing about Predix that it isn't vendor-locked solution. The Predix catalog can be extended by adding additional services and additional applications. Because it's Cloud Foundry, you can develop build pack or service broker and include your service into catalog. Uh, what issues have been solved uh, by using Predix? Uh, security, data management, device management, uh, scalability, and high availability. Let's look at the second our choice, RFID as a tax. Uh, what is RFID? Radio frequency identification uh, uses electromagnetic fields to automatically track tags attached to the objects. The tags could be passive and active. Active tags uh, has a local power source like a battery and can work within uh, 100 meters from RFID reader. Passive tags uh, collects uh, the energy from the nearby RFID reader. Uh, the operating principle of RFID is quite simple. RFID tag or transponder generates a unique signal that can be read by RFID reader. RFID reader sends information to the server or to the cloud. And RFID reader can work in read and write mode. What are advantages of RFID as technology? That's 
isn't a new technology. It's extensively used in logistics. Uh, it's quite secure and well standardized. That's why we chose it. And what about the benefits RFID in aviation? First of all, uh, RFID uh, have the higher reading rate and the higher uh, data reading speed than barcodes. Reading rate for barcodes, it's uh, around 80-85%. If you speak about RFID tags, the reading rate could be 98-100%. Uh, the RFID could, could be read through the boxes in bulk. They could be read at an angle. So, what does it mean for the airlines? It means decreasing the number of mishandling bags, uh, reducing the bag transfer time, and also less frequent flight delays. Uh, from the ground services perspective, it means um, considerable improvement in operational efficiency. And for the passengers, benefits are obvious. Passenger can be sure that their bag will be handled properly. What infrastructure do we need to implement RFID solution in the airports? First of all, the checked in points should be up upgraded by adding RFID printers or RFID writers. RFID printers work with printable bag tags and uh, RFID writer can work with permanent bag tags. Uh, both type of tags uh, are comply with industry standards. And also we need uh, the number of checkpoints. Uh, the checkpoints could be fixed like a gate and the checkpoints could be handheld. The third factor of success in our project is microservice architecture approach. Why microservices? Because they can be developed uh, separately, they can be scaled separately. You don't stick to one technology, to one programming language. You can work on different microservices in parallel and you can reach the maximum productivity faster. And also you can maintain microservices easily because you don't need to bring down the entire system to fix the issue in one microservice. Let's look at what has been done under our proof of concept. We implemented more than 10 microservices that logically can be divided into backend and front-end groups. They aren't forced to use the central data storage. Message queue uh, handles <coughs> microservices communication asynchronously and they can be used to load balance microservices requests. The services uh, don't share the common runtime, so they can use the different technology stacks and they use it, them. And let's look at one of them. The most important service in our application is Tracker UI. Uh, Tracker UI, uh, the main goal of Tracker UI to show the bag status for all participants in the system. Uh, Tracker UI is built in uh, built based on event-driven approach and it updates information uh, on the page without reloading immediately upon a real of new data. Let's look how do things uh, work from inside. Asynchronous messaging is primary communication pattern in our system. Tracker UI and Tracker Backend keep a WebSocket connection open at all time and uh, sends requests to each other. Uh, tracker Backend sends the information to Tracker UI and Tracker UI updates the information on the web page. The Tracker Backend listens for the events in the system and uh, continuously uh, update information in database. We use Redis as data storage for our prototype and only Tracker backend has an access to the data storage and decides what to store and how to store. 
And the message broker uh, is used for internal communication between microservices. The real demo solution is available on Alteros's booth. We installed two checkpoints, and we can show how the back status changes in real time. So welcome to uh, Alteros's booth and a look at our solution. And also you can watch the video record of demo. It's available on this link. And if you want to see the whole implemented features and if you want to uh, look at whole implemented functionality, please feel free to contact me directly after this session, during this day, and I'll be glad to show the whole implemented functionality and answer your question. But not in the end of the story. Let me uh, uh, tell a little bit about adoption step for this solution. Uh, we recommend to start uh, adoption RFID baggage tracking for uh, assessment the current infrastructure, current software. It could be reused. And that's a way to cut the costs when we start implement the new uh, baggage tracking solution. Then we uh, suggest to assess the technologies used uh, in this solution. Why it's so important? Because the accurate baggage tracking is just a part of the big in-back program. So industry is in a lot of improvements and the technologies should ensure easily adoption of innovations and new regulations. And as a third step, we uh, recommend uh, test installation in the airports. The best way to start test installation is choose hardware vendors. Actually, in our solution, we uh, don't stick to one hardware vendor, so we can work with different hardware vendors. Uh, uh, and uh, as a second step, we recommend to uh, grab test data, analyze it, uh, and to improve the reader's location map to reach maximum productivity in the airports. But what is the cost of implementation? The cost of implementation depends on the number of checkpoints in the airport. So it depends on, on the size of the airport. And according to IATA forecast, for Class B airports and major carriers, the payback period could be less than 12 months. That's all my presentation. And I'm ready to answer any question that you may have. The main, the real primary thing is tracking, right? So, from some point when you get the tag uh, to wherever the other airport, so the systems must be connected. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, the system must be connected. So that's why, as a first step, uh, it's recommended to use printable RFID tags that uh, can contain uh, the uh, regular barcode and RFID into it. So the printable tax, that's uh, the point how to adopt this technology. And they widely used, for example, in Hong Kong from 2008 uh, and in Las Vegas, McCarran Airport. Any questions? microservice architecture so yeah. far. Um, so first of all, actually, I'm surprised a little bit that you use Redis as a backend because I thought it was not guaranteed persistence, but I'm not sure mm -hmm. compared to an asset database which for high volume. Mm -hmm. uh, the other question, <clears throat> uh, let's do that first, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. About Redis backend. First of all, it's not production ready solution. That's a proof of concept of solution that is built uh, uh, in three months by two developers. 
really fast just from scratch. So that's an example how we can use Cloud Foundry and how we build application on top of GPredix, for example, really quickly. And Redis is used just, uh, that's easier. But uh, uh, taking into account that we use microservice approach, we can connect to the other data storage easily. Don't change the whole system. Uh, we probably want some long-term history as well, so that's mm -hmm. just kind of short-term. Um, you know, like where was the bag a year ago or something, I don't know. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The yeah. question was, um, you said microservice architecture, so which microservices did come up in the design? Do you have any uh, information about that? So how, how the application code was cut into microservices? Uh, do you mean the microservices that was implemented by Alteros? Yeah, is there just uh -huh. one microservice, the tracker? Uh -huh. No tracker, no, no. You can see uh, that there is tracker UI, tracker backend, staff backend. You can see the number of uh, analytics engine, tracking engine, checkpoints. So there's a number of microservices. It's not only one. Just I picked uh, just one to show it as an example. Edge devices. Yeah. What is the communication between the, the software and the edge devices? <coughs> and the edge sensors? The communication um, is provided by uh, GE Predix. On the edge devices, we install Predix machine or Predix edge, the special piece of software that connects to Predix cloud and sends information to Predix cloud. So the only Predix machine can be connected to the Predix cloud? Now, yeah, but actually this uh, uh, make our work easier. It, it makes our application more secure. Of course, you can uh, connect to the Predix cloud without using Predix machine, but it isn't so secure. Oh, you exceeded my technical knowledge, but uh, I am uh, answered this question a little bit later. Okay. Predix, Predix edge. Running in some special hardware, or is it just a regular machine that you want to sell for Predix machine is a Edge. Mm -hmm. Predix Edge, yeah. Predix Edge uh, is running on Raspberry Pi. You can run it on Intel uh, boards, uh, so it doesn't matter. It runs on Edge devices, not on Predix devices. Just, for example, we run it on uh, Raspberry Pi three. And uh, our test booth uh, is based on Raspberry 3, so that's not an issue. You can use uh, different kinds of hardware. So thank you for your attention. I answer your question a little bit later. <laughs> thank you.